Yo, 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 what's good guys, it's Kalzar here, today I'm just bringing you a Haven Tips and Tricks Guide, hopefully it'll help you with your matchmaking experience, because right now we're in patch 1.01, .01, just before 1.02 is going to come out, so Ranked comes out tomorrow, so this is a perfect time for me to upload a guide which might help you with your Ranked experience. With that being said, this is for advanced and basic players. So even if you're an advanced player, you might learn something new from this guide that you haven't seen before, you don't know about, and it could help you with your ranked experience going forward. Right, so let's get into it, and don't forget to like and subscribe the video, and maybe come and check me out on Twitch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna boost ourselves on top of this there. window right here. But first, you're going to have to have your omen or your brimstone smoke Ew. this window and smoke Ew. this bit of mid. This means nobody from mid can see you get, uh, getting on the window, nor can anybody see you from window uh, getting on top of a window either. You might want to throw a grenade in there just to discourage anybody playing window. What we'll do is put the satchel down and get yourself on top of a window like this. So you double satchel yourself on top of a window. You've got to crouch to get at this position as you do it. So uh, you've got to click control or whatever your bound, what your bind is for your crouch. And this is going to give you such a sick off angle. They're not going to see you in the window and these guys are not going to see you either. So if you can have somebody aggressing C doors, so these people are focused on these, you can get some easy picks. But guys window are still not going to know where you are, especially if you've got like a silenced weapon like a phantom. And once these peek underneath you, you can just assist see their head um, once they're coming out window and you can just pop them. This is also perfect for a defender's uh, an attacker's side as well, which I'm going to show you when you're playing Sage. So with Sage, the scenario that I want to pitch you is your team have taken over B site. They've got the bomb down. You can probably do this if you had smokes down and you knew them weren't initially taken mid uh, as a defender. But I tend to use this on attack. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wall my wall myself up outside a window and just crouch and jump on top of a wall uh, on top of here. Basically, what it's going to look like for anybody who's going to rotate from A, because t what people tend to do whenever you take over the B bomb site, they'll have a, ra a rotator come mid. If they see this wall, they're just going to expect that you've walled window off, so you've been able to get a plan and isolate this angle so you can take different fights. When this wall breaks, what they're going to do is they're going to jump out, you can just kill them. Uh, what this is great for as well is... It's happened to me plenty of times in matches. I've got to this point and somebody's peaked from like the right or the left to check these angles here, check this angle here, check this angle here. And they don't ever expect me here. They're not gonna be pre they're not gonna be pre-aiming this spot as well. So I can I can, if I'm pre-aiming here, I and I know they're gonna come from one of these sides, I can win that fight like 99% of the time because they're not pre-aiming me and I'm pre-aiming them. It's the same as doors. If I get the information that somebody see doors, I'm going to win this fight 99% of the time because they're not pre-aiming me. As long as you have superior aim, you're going to win that fight every time. So this is a great spot for an off angle and it's absolutely fantastic for an after plant. So keep this in mind whenever you take control of the B bomb site. Now with us playing Sage, a great thing that we can do right now is we can utilize our walls to be a very aggressive sage. I realize this is very basic and there's people who probably know these things, but I want everybody from all skill levels, all facets to know about these sort of things. So if you're brand new to the game and you don't know about this, this is perfect for you. This wall right here can be placed at the back of bombsite. When you place it at the back of bombsite, don't stand too close or anything like that because your wall could potentially break. Because the thing with sage walls, since they've been updated, if you get caught on something, your walls will automatically break. So stand just a little bit away, wall yourself up here, and as you can see, you give yourself a head angle just to take a fight on mid. And this is perfect for like, if, the, if you know that they're taking window fights and you have like superior cross air placement, and you've got really good aim you can w you can win these fights at mid straight up or just take a spam through the wall and this is safer than just standing on here and taking a spam through the wall because only your head's showing and they need to have decent aim in order to uh, kill you 
Now another wall that we can use is the one back here. This gives you a little bit more leverage on mid. As you can see, you get more you get more of the player model back here, but they can see more of you. So you're sacrificing your, your head glitch spot for more information on uh, your enemy. But the thing is, is you're more exposed and they're more exposed. Therefore, if you have like less superior aim and you need to spray sometimes, this might be perfect for you. This might be a better angle. Plus, once this wall's breaking, you can jump onto this spot right here. So if the wall breaks and they haven't peaked, you can just jump onto this spot right here. And if you jump spot here, you can jump spot mid. See if they're walking up on your own beach. Now, our next stage wall, what I like to do on this one is I like to pretty much place my wall down here. So the reason why I do it like this is because I'm really OCD with my walls and I genuinely think it's good practice to not allow your enemy to see your walls. So I make sure that the wall cuts off here so the guys peek and see long cannot see my wall. That means when I'm on top of my wall here, like so, they're not seeing this wall. So they're not going to expect me on this angle right here. If you're ever setting up these walls, don't allow your wall to be peeking because people will just expect you to be stunned on that wall. So you can take the fights down long from this and again another good head angle for you you're going to see their entire body and they're just going to see your head therefore they have to have decent aim in order to kill you whereas you can just spray their bodies down as so now onto the next sage wall this sage wall right here is fantastic whenever anybody's on long what you're going to do is like we said before we don't want our wall to be seen by the enemy straight up so we put our wall on the edge of the bomb site right here. Here. Oh my god. Here. There. We put our wall, uh, wall so it hits the edge of it there. Then we go up on it. I know they can see this side, but that's not the. Uh, you're gonna be peeking them as they peek this, and you can just peek around this angle right now. This is an off angle that nobody's gonna expect, especially if you've had information here. on somebody playing here. You can just jiggle peek this angle and just take the take the headshots on them. So this is another fantastic aggressive wall if the guys are executing A. I use it as they're, as they're executing and a lot of the time the guys are like pre-aiming these angles. They're going to go around pre-aiming this angle, this angle and if I pop up on there I usually get like one or two trades before I go out and then my team are already in the sights I've delayed them. Now being a sage main myself, the, wall, the walls have been nerfed to hell. So if you just place a wall directly across you, it's going to easily be broken right? So what we tend to do is, you see right here, the sage wall right now can be put inside this door. They're going to have to break numerous tiles instead of just one tile. But on top of that, if you put yourself in here like this, and wall yourself up like, like so, you can jump on this spot right here, and you can just take shots at people who are coming across here like this. Now, as you can see, they have to break one, two, three before they even get into C doors. So it's much better to do walls where they have to break numerous tiles and put them inside choke points, as opposed to just hitting a wall like this, because now all they need to do is break one tile and they can get, they have full control of the C garage. Now, instead of wall boosts, we're gonna talk about one way walls. One way walls are very, very strong for a Sage. What you're gonna do is you're gonna place your wall here, like like so, on long, and right here you've got a gap in the wall. You can just take shots at these people on either side. Bearing in mind that you're probably just gonna get, you're gonna hit the body and you're gonna hit the legs, but they're not gonna be able to shoot. They're not really gonna shoot you back. You're, you you've got the superior off angle on them there. So this is a very strong wall for the people who are, who are pushing a, uh, a long and you're going to output so much damage onto these guys. Now our second one way wall, this is going to be for a shot. So on a shot what you can do is you can put your wall down here as so. What this is going to do is it's going to create another off, off angle and sometimes placing it a little bit further to the right can can even give you a headshot it can literally give you a headshot at this point 
it's a super strong wall and it's very versatile uh, playing sage on a if you're going to switch it up usually most sages play b but if you want to switch it up through the round this is perfect to catch your enemy off guard and discourage him from coming a card okay guys on to the next tips and trick uh what we're gonna have is we're gonna be putting a silver dart on the shot and this is gonna ha uh, show all the enemies who are pushing shot um you're gonna be able to jump up onto this yeah. box here this little box here and you're gonna be able to spam through the wall when he reveals all the enemies on the shot this is a exceptional spamming spot you can be shot back through it uh, by the enemy but this is amazing for catching them off guard if they're abusing shot quite a lot so I'm gonna get my silver a fire a dart now. Could you fire it, please? There they are. One enemy remaining. One enemy you remaining. Well. Now we do it with a vandal. One more time, please. There they are. One enemy remaining. And now we're going to do it with the Odin, which has the highest penetration in the game, along with the Operator. One more time. As you can see, remaining. the Odin has remaining. such a higher penetration than the other two weapons. You could do the same with the Operator, but the Odin has more consistency because it's not just a one-shot. Therefore, this is perfect for catching your enemy off guard or if you have a lot of economy and you need to waste a little bit of economy, maybe take an Odin and you can spam through the wall if you're at a uh, cap 9k economy. So, this is perfect, like I said, if the enemy are abusing a shot. It's something that they won't expect. And last but not least, we come out with silver darts. I only want to show you guys 5 silver darts because I don't want to overwhelm you with brand new knowledge and these are things you can go away and practice if you have any more questions on silver darts and any more of that you can use on haven be sure to get in touch and i'll be more than happy to help you out so with that being said the first silver dart i'm going to show you we line ourselves up in the corner here outside of c garage there's a flag post right here at the top of the flag post where it has the little square as you can see i want you to line your, your crosshair up with that and just move it slightly to the left of the roof tile. Now, I want you to hit two charges on your arrow. There's just like so. The arrow is going to charge to mid. And it's going to land here. This is going to get everybody in this vicinity right now. The reason why I want the arrow to land there is because right now, silvers are hitting darts that are hitting right there. So, the people at mid are just going to sit underneath, underneath this roof and expect the arrow to hit here, right here. as opposed to here. Right here. This means that when the dart actually lands on the floor, they're not going to have enough time to react and shoot your, da shoot your dart out, where you're going to get information on them. So, once you, once you shoot this here, you saw the dart right here. Revealing area. You're going to have enough time for it to land and then peek out. You're gonna have preemptive information and they're not gonna know what's hit them when you peek them. Now, our second silver dart isn't too far from our first one. It's literally on the other side of the wall. So with that being said, I want you to bring yourself into the corner of the wall. Line yourself up with this red flag right here. Bring your crosshair to the top right of the flag. Then I want you to hit one bounce on your arrow. I'm going to make you charge twice on your arrow right now and just let area. it go. Once that happens, you're going to be getting the ping for the mid window ledge. Why this is so important is because silver arrows are based on line of sight. So if that went inside the window, um, there's a little ledge here. You wouldn't be able to see anybody on the outside of mid. Because it lands on top of it, everybody in this mid vicinity are going to be hit by, by this arrow. And nobody's going to shoot this out on the first ping, I imagine, because it's not your typical silver arrow that you fire. I don't really see it that often uh, in my games, and I play a, a, a high elo games. Therefore, you're going to get at least one ping before it gets shot out, so you're going to have a ton of information if people are trying to take mid control. So, that being said, I say that it's like an ST arrow right now. 
Our third solo arrow is not too far from our first two. We're all in close proximity of each other because they're defense based arrows right now. With that being said, what I want you to do is bring yourself into the corner of this box that is on bomb site. Now that you're in the corner of this box, this box in front of us right now, uh, the top left corner of the box, I want you to line up the knuckle of the hand that's holding the bow. So Sova's hand that's holding the bow, I want you to line up the knuckle with the top of it, so it elapses over the top of the box. I'm going to do that one more time, just so you're, you're comfortable with this. Bring in the top knuckle of Sova's hand to elapse over the top of the box. Now, with that being placed, I want you to just charge the arrow once. Reveal one full area. charge. I'm going to follow where the arrow goes. And as you can see, it hits the vegetation of the tree. Now that it's landed inside the tree, it's going to get everybody in this area. Everybody that's uh, in the sea area. It's not going to get somebody who's playing a close angle right here. But it will also get the people underneath the tree right here. And it's going to get people that are playing mid. This is going to gather so much information for your team to make rotations based on this. So if you see four or five people with that one silver dart, which is not going to get shot straight away because it's, it's in the sky and above everybody. You, if you have people doubling up on A, you can take one person off A and bring, bring them to B or C because you know that it's not going to be an A-based execution then. So this dart is super important. Especially if the guys are uh, uh, hitting C quite a lot or they're hitting mid. Now on our fourth arrow, again not too far from our uh, third arrow, but we're changing things up right now. This is going to be an attack based arrow. This platform right here, I want you to get on top of it. Get yourself in the corner so you can't be seen from short because people like to aggress short on this map, right? Now you're going to be directly underneath th this little piece of wood right here. And there's like an oval in the tree, like a, a nice little gap. You line your crosshair up with the center of it, move it slightly to the right. You're gonna full charge your arrow and just let it go. Now we're gonna find out where this goes. And as your team are entering the bomb site, it's gonna hit the top of it. This is gonna get quite a bit of information on bomb site. It's going to get the people playing here, a person playing here, people playing the uh, right hand side of short, it will be right hand side when you come up for attack, and it's going to get a person playing here. The only person this is not going to get is probably the guy that's going to be sitting on this angle right here, just jiggle peeking down on the long. So this is a really good arrow for attack. And it's fantastic because by the time your team get there, if they sprint, it's going to land as your team are executing. Therefore, the team are going to be flustered trying to find the silver dart as they fight your team. Thank you for checking out this video. I hope that it's helped and it'll be able to elevate your gameplay to another level or it'll be able to help in any sort of way. If it has, Please leave me a, a like and a subscribe and come over and check me out on my Twitch. I'm always happy to help anybody du during a session whilst I'm live. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. So it, with that being said, thank you and have a blessed day.